Well, there is a U.S. cruise line getting ready to re-enter service. And one thing we're getting from them that we haven't got from the other cruise lines is a list of new health protocols. In today's episode of the La Lida Luca Cruise Show, we're going to look at Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line. We're going to look at the new health protocols. And there's one in there that blew my mind. Wow. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Tony. If you enjoy cruising and travel content, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of our episodes. Well, do you know about the Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line? They are a small cruise line that sails ships out of the port of Palm Beach. They're on the east coast of Florida. They got two cruise ships, and what they do is they take older cruise ships and they refurbish them. I've referred to them before as almost a taxi to the Bahamas dressed up as a cruise ship, but they're legit cruise ships. They've got buffets and casinos and entertainment, that kind of thing, and they've got two ships in their fleet. They have the Grand Celebration, an old carnival cruise ship built in 1987 that they purchased, refurbished, and they have the Grand Classica, which is an old Costa cruise ship built in 1991 which now has been purchased by Bahama Cruise Line and refurbished. They put out a press release just the other day saying that they would be resuming sailing with the Grand Celebration on July the 25th 2020. That's one day after the CDC's no-sell order expires and then they would be resuming sailings on the Grand Classica on October the 2nd 2020. What I'd like to do is jump into the press release and look at the health protocols that they're putting in place. The reason this is important is this is a United States-based cruise line. Uh, The ships are probably flagged somewhere else, but what I'm saying is this is a cruise line that will be sailing from the United States. And so if these health protocols are accepted by the CDC, uh, this could be uh, a partial standard or what we may see when other cruise lines try to come online. I will leave the link to this press release in the first comment along with a link to the more detailed protocols. Uh, The top of the press release, basically what I talked about, the return to sailing. And now let's look quickly at the... Uh, the protocols that they're putting in place. They've broken them up into some broad categories. The first one being capacity control, closing two passenger stateroom decks to reduce crowds on board the ship, limit the number of in-use staterooms to reduce onboard capacity by 40%. These protocols will encourage social distancing and provide one of the highest guests to space ratios in the industry. The, That should be the summation of all of it. The big challenge for the cruise line is to uh, be able to social distance and to provide more empty space for the guest. And, uh, of course, these protocols are the first protocols, a strong claim here by Bahamas Paradise. But, yeah, that's social distancing is going to be the reoccurring theme, and they're only going to sell with 60% capacity. They're going to reduce their capacity by 40%. Embarkation and debarkation, all guests required to practice social distancing from valet parking to terminal check-in. All terminal staff members will be monitored and required to wear masks and remain behind safety plexiglass for minimal contact. Passenger luggage will be disinfected prior to onboard delivery, mandatory touch-free temperature checks, and pre-boarding health declarations for all guests, extensive sanitation and disinfection processes at entry of port terminal, ships, and passenger walkway areas, online check-in for guests who will receive designated arrival times at cruise terminal to streamline embarkation and minimize crowds in port. The big nuggets out of there and the one that I like, you're going to be able to check in online and they'll give you a time to show up and get on the cruise ship. I think that's interesting. If that works the way that that sounds on paper, that's going to be magical. I would love to be at my hotel. Boom, bang, bing, check in, show up at 12 o'clock. They give you a time. You just walk right on the ship. The interesting thing, uh, they're going to be disinfecting all luggage before delivering it to the passenger What does that mean for carry-ons? Not really spelled out here. Is there going to be a process to disinfect your carry-on or will all luggage have to go uh, through that process and be delivered to you? Uh, Not clear here, but yeah, I'm interested in that. Guest accommodation, sanitation of all cabins with hospital-grade disinfectants, fogging of vacant cabins and twice-daily wipe-down of hallways, 
Disinfection of guest bathrooms with heavy-duty alkaline cleaner. Timely housekeeping cabin turnover with sheets and linens cleaned and disinfected at sterilizing temperatures. So all of that sounds heavy-duty. That's the big nugget there, heavy-duty. On the show yesterday, we talked about a concern of uh, having your cabin cleaned. I want all this heavy-duty stuff. I'll leave a link to that video above, but there's no way I'm passing up on the cleaning. It all sounds heavy-duty. I like it. Common areas, all onboard public areas will undergo a two-tier sanitation process, which includes cleansing and fogging using hospital-grade disinfectants. Frequency includes elevators every two hours, public areas, and facilities up to 10 times per day. Frequently touched areas, including handrails, tabletops, and door handles, will be sterilized on the hour. All floors will be disinfected with heavy-duty neutral pH floor cleaning solution. All onboard areas will include fully stocked self-service hand sanitizers. The only one that jumps out to me, this is all more cleaning, right? Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. The one that jumps out to me is this fogging. I know whenever I've fogged anything in my house, I wasn't supposed to be near that fog. I don't know how they're going to fog stuff on a cruise ship while guests are there. Maybe they can cordon, you know, cordon it off or keep people out of it. But uh, anybody know about fogging? Leave a comment below. Food hygiene. All restaurants and bars will be cleaned and sanitized thrice daily, three times a day. Self-service buffet stations have been suspended. All food and beverage will be served by crew members wearing face masks, hats, aprons, and gloves. Tables and seating areas will keep guests six feet apart to facilitate social distancing, stringent procurement guidelines will be enforced and products from certain regions will be prohibited. Uh, here's the nuggets out of that one for me. Again, the end of the self-service buffet for now, the prioritization of social distancing. And this last bullet point, procurement guidelines will be enforced and products from certain regions will be prohibited. What does that mean? Well, when we do the deeper dive into food and beverage, I think that will be revealed. Get ready to be shocked. Entertainment and recreation theaters will be cleaned thoroughly. Kids club stuff cleaned. Spa and gym cleaned. Tour buses for excursions only going to have 50% capacity. They're going to be training the tour people to follow the guidelines from the World Health Organization. Casino players per table will be restricted to ensure social distancing and slot machines will be positioned uh, to separate players. The challenge for me in the casino is my favorite game is craps. It's a pretty social game, and there's usually only one craps table per cruise ship, and oftentimes more craps players than that one table, and now you're going to reduce the capacity at that table by at least 50% to get some sort of distance between people. Uh, it could be a bummer for craps players, but it does look like slot. You know, slots is kind of the bread and butter for the casino. They'll be able to move those machines around and give people their own uh, individual way to play. Practices and standards for crew members. This is a big one. This is a big concern people have. They're going to be checking their temperatures twice daily. That might not be a bad idea for guests. I don't know how they facilitate that. All frontline crew are required to wear face masks, and all food service crews serving guests in the buffet all required to wear disposable hats, aprons, masks, and gloves. Housekeeping and food and bev are required to wear both disposable gloves and masks. The, disposable, the disposal of all gloves and masks will align with the CDC's guidelines. All crew will be required to use antibacterial hand soap for at least 20 seconds. All crew members are required to practice social distancing, and each crew member will be allocated their own cabin on board the ship. I like a lot of this, the taking the temperature twice a day. That's preventative. Hopefully they'll find somebody whose temperature is on the rise, maybe giving some indication that they need to be examined further. I like the fact that since they're reducing their guest capacity, that it frees up more cabins, and now the crew members don't have to stay stacked on top of each other to in a cabin. They'll get their own cabin. I think that's a big deal. And then I don't know if you picked up on this, food and beverage crew, that means your bartenders. That's going to be interesting, bartenders wearing disposable gloves, and face coverings. And then uh, one thing we haven't heard a lot about from a lot of cruise lines, the medical center, isolated wards available in the medical center for guests who are ill, uh, contaminated items, medical waste will be disposed properly according to guidelines, used face masks will be disposed, medical equipment will be thoroughly cleaned. This will become standard stuff. There has to be protocols for how you throw away protective equipment, how do you throw away all these masks that everybody are wearing, and then what do you do if somebody gets sick? There's going to be new procedures 
just for isolation. Again, all this will have to pass the scrutiny of the CDC, but you can see that the cruise lines are starting to think forward as to what to do in the event of uh, uh, an outbreak. Fresh air ventilation systems implemented a fresh air ventilation system to ensure health quality in all onboard cabins, common areas, all air filters and cooling coils will be thoroughly checked, cleaned and replaced as needed. Uh, this has been a big concern for guests. Uh, is this thing airborne and what is the quality of the air on the cruise ship? Bahamas Paradise making that a priority in their protocols. Uh, they will be cleaning and replacing filters, coils, uh, keeping the air as clean as possible. And now a new uh, external system to make sure that they're pulling in fresh air and pumping it into the cruise ship. Uh, these are some interesting protocols. Uh, before I make too much commentary, let's jump over to the, uh, the the detailed food and bev, and we'll talk a little bit about something that's, uh, that caught my eye. Uh, this is a little trippy. Here we go. These are the food and bev procedures. Uh, not too much different than what we read in the highlights. Guests per table will be restricted. You can get plastic cutlery. That wasn't mentioned in the highlights, but if you don't want to use the silverware that everybody else is using, you can request the plastic all food and bev uh, lounges, they'll be served guests by crew members wearing masks, hats, aprons. That, that was there. Uh, here it is. The culinary use of wild animals and related products is strictly prohibited. Let me read it again. Culinary use of wild animals and related products, strictly prohibitive. I don't think I know what that means, but you know, here's the, here's the deal. The current pandemic thought by many to be the result of a transfer from an animal to a human and uh, from, from eating weird stuff, eating weird wild animals like bats and those kind of things. Uh, I like that Bahamas Paradise has called it out. I didn't know this was a concern for cruise ships. I, you know, is, is it possible that that fun day that we have in Cozumel, when we all get off to go to one of the local beaches, there is a crew that leaves the cruise ship to go hunting for wild boar or hunting in the brush there for wild uh, lizards. I don't know. Like I didn't, I, I just assumed that all the food on the cruise ship just came, you know, prepackaged from uh, like a food packaging place. Uh, maybe when we're asleep at night they're you know chumming the waters and catching big marlin i don't know what's going on on the cruise ship that this had to be called out but for goodness sake we can all rest easy that there will be no wild game procured for your dinner on a cruise ship at bahamas paradise I, again i didn't know that this was a concern all right so just to sum up here not a lot of surprises uh, we knew there would be a prioritization of social distancing. We knew that there would be a prioritization of cleaning. Uh, I do like the fact that in embarkation, they have some processes where you can check in, show up, get on the cruise ship quickly based on an appointment time. If that runs smoothly, I think that's going to be a good uh, experience embarkation wise. Uh, yeah, I do feel comfortable that they're going to be checking the health of the crew frequently, that they're giving all the crew their own cabin. And then of course, air filtration that, and of course, air filtration, that's becoming an issue. I like the fact that they're addressing that. And for goodness sakes, I'm so excited that they will no longer be hunting wild game and serving it on the cruise ship. Not that they were doing that, but that was just, uh, that was an interesting thing. I think one thing that many cruisers probably will key in on and be excited about is there's no requirement for face coverings for the guest. Uh, many people that I've spoken to and talked to in the community, uh, very opposed to having to wear a face covering on their cruise vacation. So if this is any indication as to what other cruise lines will do, uh, if this is successful, then uh, one of those things that really kind of getting under people's skin, possibly face coverings on the cruise, uh, that, that seems like that's not going to be in place. But those are my big takeaways. The question for the comments is this, anything surprise you here, anything you're excited about, anything you feel like is missing, please leave a comment below. Let's continue the conversation. Thank you so much for watching the show today, for taking some time. Uh, please show your support for the channel by hitting the like button. Uh, here's a couple other videos recommended by YouTube. You can help us out by watching those. And uh, I'll say thanks again. Thanks again. This is Tony for La Lita Loca. And until the next time. We'll see you on the Lido. Bye.